From Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Victor Beatty reporting the besieged rebel-held towns of Dorea and Moadamia near Damascus, Syria received UN aid convoys Wednesday for Dorea with an estimated four to 8,000 people. It was the first outside assistance received in four years. The truck convoy contained medicines, vaccines, baby formula, and nutritional items for children. It comes as the U.N. Security Council Friday is expected to take up the matter of World Food Program directed aid airdrops to besieged areas across Syria. U.S. spokesman John Kirby says land deliveries, while preferable, have been insufficient because they're denied access to hundreds of thousands of Syrians in need. The World Food Program has provided briefings to the United States on a series of approaches that could be taken, and we have discussed those with our Russian counterparts, including, I might add, in a phone call earlier today, this morning, between Secretary Kerry and Foreign Minister Lavrov. Meanwhile, U.S.-backed forces have taken control of nine villages near the Turkish border in Syria since Tuesday in an advance toward the Islamic State-controlled town of Manbij. Witnesses in Somali capital Mogadishu Wednesday said at least 10 people, including two lawmakers, were killed, dozens wounded when militants attacked the Ambassador Hotel with gunfire and a suicide car bomb. Among the wounded was Jama Abdi. He says he screamed for help as many people were buried in rubble. The insurgency al-Shabaab claimed responsibility. Meanwhile, Somali officials and a senior al-Shabaab commander, Mohammed Mahmoud Ali, also known as Dul Yadin, was killed in a military operation this week. He's believed to have masterminded the April 2015 attack on Kenya's Garissa University College that left 148 mostly students dead. This is VOA News. In Iraq, a military assault on the Islamic State-held city Fallujah has reportedly stalled as a result of stiff resistance put up by IS defenders and concern for civilians trapped by the fighting. Prime Minister Haider al Abadi says the main objective of the operation is to reduce civilian and army casualties. An estimated 50,000 people, including some 20,000 children, are believed to be trapped inside Fallujah. Egyptian aviation officials Wednesday said a French ship picked up signals likely emitted from one of the black boxes of an Egypt airplane that disappeared from radar over the Mediterranean last month. The search area for the crash site is between the Greek island Crete and the Egyptian coastline. Aviation expert Anthony Thomas Anthony of the University of Southern California says the flight data recorders emit a specific pinging sound that's relatively easy to detect. The signal is of a specific frequency, and so it's identified as being from the, uh, the pinger. However, it is only really just one source of data that's going to help them locate that wreckage. The black boxes could provide critical information in the final moments of the ill-fated Egypt Air Airbus A320 Flight 804 that disappeared from radar on a flight from Paris to Cairo May 19th, killing all 66 on board. A U.S. military commander in Afghanistan said Wednesday that even though it's early in the fighting season against the Taliban, Afghan security forces are improving their performance. We do believe that the ANDSF has performed better this year uh, than they were performing last year. And based on that, we are cautiously optimistic about the coming months because overall, we do believe that they have some momentum right now. Army Brigadier General Charles Cleveland describing the improvement as gradual but steady. He says they've switched from a defensive to offensive mindset and are getting close in air support. Five men acquitted in a 2010 attack that killed dozens watching a football game in Uganda's capital have been charged with plotting fresh terror acts while in prison. 
The three Kenyans and two Ugandans allegedly created documents and materials connected to terrorist acts. Twin blasts six years ago claimed by the Somali insurgency al-Shabaab killed 76 while they were watching World Cup action on television at a restaurant and rugby club in Kampala. The World Health Organization Wednesday said the latest Ebola outbreak in the West African country Guinea has ended. The country is now entering a 90-day period of heightened surveillance against any new cases. The last known patient was discharged from a hospital in April. The price of oil held steady Thursday as an OPEC oil cartel meeting got underway in Vienna, although analysts quoted in media reports doubt any agreement on a production ceiling will be reached to boost the price of oil. I'm Victor Beatty, VOA News. That's the latest world news from VOA.